They can be annoying, but if done right, they can be a very useful feature on your landing page, website or blog to convert visitors into buyers or build your email list. Pop-ups. This is how to set up not only pop-up forms, but also inline forms on System.io and then use them on both pages made on System.io and on pages made externally, for example WordPress. Welcome to episode 6 of System.io Snaps, the short and snappy tutorial series for all System.io users, both beginners and advanced. So as just mentioned, we're going to talk about two variants of forms here. One is the common pop-up form that well pops up on a page and variant 2 is the inline form that is always shown on a page and does not pop up. Now that this is clear, let's look at the most basic form of a pop-up that is created on any page and also only works on that one page. This could be a page in any of your funnels or any of your blogs that are created in System.io. Here we see a random page that I have copied from one of the many free page templates. By clicking on edit page here, we enter the page editor. Once inside the editor, there's a button called pop-ups in the top left. That's where we click, obviously. We can now see here that this page already has a pop-up and when we click on the eye icon here, we can see it in the editor. This pop-up can now be edited just like any other page on System.io. You can add and remove input form elements, add pictures, videos, change fonts, colors, whatever you want. Keep in mind that the simpler and more straightforward a pop-up is, the more likely it is that someone will opt in. If there is too much text or clutter that confuses people and gives them too much time to think about whether or not they should opt in, most of the time they will not. So keep it as simple as possible. Now here I would probably remove the last name and the phone number fields, unless you absolutely need this information. The most important thing you need to remember is that the correct action is assigned to the button that you place on your pop-up form. So let's click on the button and then you see here that the action is currently set to open URL. This is wrong. The button action must be set to submit form. Only this action makes sure that the data entered in these forms is submitted to you and the contact is added to your list. Here you can then also select what should happen next once someone opted in on this pop-up. You can choose to show the next step in your funnel, which could be a thank you page for example. You can redirect to any other URL you want or you can set it to no redirection, which means that people will stay on the same page after submitting the form. Next you can choose to enable or disable double opt-in. If you enable it, a confirmation email that you define in your system.io account settings will be sent out to the new contact. If the contact then doesn't click on the confirmation link in that email within 24 hours, they will be automatically deleted. Finally, and this is something new that I also discovered just now, we can directly add an automation rule to a button. In this case, we could choose to add a tag to a new contact. This tag could then trigger an email campaign or another more complex workflow. Let's now take one step back and look at the settings of the entire pop-up by clicking on this edit pop-up settings button here. Besides the basic settings that are available on any page like colors, fonts, borders, shadows, etc. There is this top section here that we're going to focus on. The first one here is pretty clear. You can decide to either show or hide the close button on your pop-up. Just below you can change the color of this close button. There is currently no other option to change the design of this X button. Next, we have this delay setting here. What this does is explained by clicking on this question mark icon here. Set the number of days before a pop-up reappears for a returning visitor. In other words, if this is disabled and someone visits your page three times in one day, they could see this pop-up three times, depending on the other settings here. Speaking of annoying pop-ups, if this setting is enabled and let's say set to one day, that visitor who opens your page three times in one day will only see the pop-up once. The next time they will see it again is when they visit your page again in one day or whatever period you defined here. The next setting is the one that probably causes the most annoyance. You can define whether or not this pop-up should open automatically and if so, after what time. Finally, there is this setting here. You can decide if the pop-up should be open when someone is leaving the browser window. So as soon as I move my cursor away from the page, the pop-up will appear. Now this obviously only works on the computer but not on mobile devices where we don't have a cursor that could be detected. That's what this checkbox is here for. As there is no exit intent detection on a mobile device, the only option is a timer where you can set the time after which the pop-up should be displayed. When we go one step back again, you can see that you can create as many pop-ups as you want on one page. I don't know if there's a limit, but in most cases you only need one pop-up anyway. Again, keep it simple. One case that could maybe justify multiple 
pop-ups is if you have, let's say, three different buttons for three different products on one single page, you could then create three different pop-ups, each showing different information. Then you could assign each of the pop-ups to a different button and in the end also set the redirect URLs to different funnel page URLs. Just an idea. So what we just did was to create and set up the most basic form of a pop-up. You can do this on any of your funnel or blog pages on System.io. The limitation of this approach is that you can only use this pop-up on the page that it was created on. Yes, we could save part of the design of the form, for example, this blue framed row here as our own design block that we could then reuse on other pages. But we wouldn't have all the pop-up settings, only a part of the design. If we want to create and set up a pop-up form or an inline form that we can use over and over again on as many pages as we want, we need to create standalone forms. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet is the basic inline form that you can create on any of your pages as well. So instead of adding a pop-up to any of your pages, you can simply add one or multiple input elements like first name and email plus a button. This is what we can see on this page template here. It's the most basic form you can create. So let's go back to the main funnel menu and either create a new funnel or in my case here, I'm using this test funnel. I then click on add step. In the window that opens, we give our form a name and then select either inline form or pop-up form. Let's create both and choose from one of the free templates. I'm gonna leave the designs as they are for this video. But of course, you can design your forms however you like. Now that we have created both the inline and the pop-up variants of our new forms, it's time to embed them anywhere we want. So that's what we're gonna do next. By the way, all these templates are accessible directly in your free or paid System.io account. You can browse through all the free templates for all kinds of niches in the brand new System.io template library here. I'll leave a link to this library in the description below from where you can then instantly copy the templates you like into your System.io account. If you don't have one yet, you will be prompted directly to create your account. It's quick and easy. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get back to how we can embed and use our inline or pop-up form on any page, whether it's a page made on System.io or with an external tool like WordPress, for example. Let's first look at how you can add the inline form to your pages. With your inline form selected, make sure you're on the Step Configuration tab here. Then click on the Script button here and copy the link to the clipboard. Next, we need to head over to the page we want to add this inline form to. For this video, let's just go back to the page we used at the beginning. But of course, this could be any of your funnel or blog pages. Open the page editor and then on the left side scroll down to get the raw HTML element. Now drag this page element onto the page at the position you want your inline form to be displayed. Then click on the element and in the top left corner on edit code. Here we now paste the script code we copied from our inline form and then click save. Finally, save the page and click on the eye icon to preview the page. And when we scroll down on the page, we can see that our inline form is exactly where we placed it. Now, when it comes to the pop-up form instead of the inline form, the process is almost exactly the same. The only difference is that with the pop-up form, we don't use the raw HTML element that we dragged onto the page. We need to paste the code snippet somewhere else. In the editor of the page you want to add your pop-up to, click here on settings in the top left corner. This shows the page wide settings. Scroll down, then click on edit header code. This is where we paste the code snippet for the pop-up form. Click save and save the page. When we preview it, the pop-up appears after one second because that's what it's currently set to. Now that would basically be it, but there are two other more special or advanced options for adding your pop-up form to another page. Let me show you these as well, even though most of us likely won't need these options. The first one is to add your pop-up on another page as a link someone would click on. So instead of clicking on the script button as we did previously, we now click on the create a link button. This opens a window where we can add the text of our link and then copy the code. When we go back to our test page once again, add another raw HTML element and paste this code in there, this is what we get. The link we just created is now shown on the page and when we click on it, the pop-up opens. The second of these special options is to add your pop-up in an embedded form to your page. So now instead of clicking on script or on create a link, this time we click here on embedded form. And one last time, we go back to our test page, add another raw HTML element, 
and paste this code. The preview of the page shows us this bare embedded form of our pop-up with just the input fields and the basic button. Now, these last two options I've just shown are more advanced than special cases. These options can be used if you use more of your own custom code to manually change the design of your form elements and links. Again, most people probably won't need these options, but it's nice that we have them. Okay, these two special cases aside, how can we now embed our inline form or pop-up form in an external page on WordPress. What we just did with copying and pasting these code snippets from either the inline or the pop-up form to any page on system.io is also exactly how it works on external pages. All you do is follow the same steps. You first create the form you want in system.io, then copy the code snippet. On WordPress, you then add that code snippet to the widgets part, if it's an inline form. On the other hand, if you want to add the system.io pop-up on your WordPress page, one of the easiest ways to do this is to use a plugin like WP Code. Search for that plugin and then install and activate it in WordPress. Once that's done, go into the header and footer settings of the plugin and paste your code snippet in the header section and click save. There are other ways to do all this, but I'm showing you just one of them to explain how it basically works. Whatever page editor or funnel builder you use, as long as you have an option to add custom code somewhere, you can embed your inline or pop-up forms that you created in System.io. So now you already know most of what there is to know about pop-ups and inline forms on System.io. It can be a bit confusing at first, but once you see the different options, it's quite easy to understand. I hope this was helpful. If so, please like and subscribe, and then click here to watch the tutorials in this playlist to learn more about what you can do with System.io.